Welcome back to another episode of KingCast. I am Jeff Osborne. Got a message for the King. Get well soon. Can't wait to see you again. A few episodes back, we brought up the man who was responsible for making the King laugh sometimes in the middle of matches. That was Terry Funk. That's the King's favorite opponent to take on. Of course, the one he has the most history with would be superstar Bill Dundee. But I brought up Nick Bockwinkle because I believe Bockwinkle is one of the most underappreciated human beings that has ever set foot in our sport and sports entertainment. I asked the King what he thought about Nick Bockwinkle. But I always wanted to know about Bockwinkle because I hear that when I compare him to Flair as, uh, to me, I think he's the epitome of a champion. To me, Nick Bockwinkle is the most underrated champion ever, maybe the most underrated wrestler ever. I mean, but you would have had, you would have had to actually be around him and work with him and and uh, to to realize that i mean he was so smooth he was he was like what you said he was the epitome of what i always thought a champion should be i mean he was so knowledgeable he always dressed looked the part looked like a million dollars uh he, he was so intelligent and articulate so that if there's a tone of arrogance or condescension in my voice. It is accumulative over a period of years of which I have taken and done things, accomplished things. On his interviews that he would make before a match or during a match or whatever, I mean, you know, he had that ability to talk down to the audience where everybody felt like, this guy is better than me. May I say that first of all, if my big words seem to put you a little bit off center, and if a lot of the fatuous, cretinous humanoids out there don't understand some of my big words, do understand one thing. I'm not talking to you or to your fans. I'm talking to my fans. Let me just say that this thing here is emblematic. It is symbolical of the peak, the pinnacle, and the finest, the zenith in our sport today, the heavyweight championship of the world. So it does seem strange that this giant gold and silver diamond studded license plate and my big words all do go together, don't they? I mean, he's not just saying he really, I mean, he made the people, the fans feel that way. And, uh, oh my gosh, just, I mean, being in the ring with him was just so great. He just uh, so smooth and I, I don't even, it's, it's hard to put into words uh, to maybe to say how easy it was to work with Nick. I mean, I can tell you, you know, from experience, a lot of guys, it wasn't easy. It was like a struggle to work with some guys. But with Nick, it was just, a, it was just so easy. And he was always on top of his game. And he, when you say, you know, like the epitome of a champion, and to me, this is one of the things that Nick was so great at. Uh, even though before the match, he would talk to fans and, and talk to the fans and talk to his opponent and make you think when you listen to him, this guy really is the champion for a reason. He really is better than everybody else out there. But then when the match came around, he did what I think most champions are supposed to do. He he made the fans think when the match was over he made the fans think the guy he was wrestling should be the champion yeah. but somehow nick saved himself and uh he was so good i mean i can't tell you how many times i wrestle nick in memphis they were all good but never yeah, never won the championship and but every single match he made every fan at that mid-south coliseum or wherever we wrestled in our territory louisville evansville wherever he made every fan believe that I should have been the champion, and that's you know that's what uh, that's what a, a, a real uh, true champion does. He he goes from territory to territory, you know, representing the AWA or the NWA or whatever it was WWE, and um, and you know he's only there for a short time, but but he's there to uh, make the people think their hometown hero should be the champion. That was what Nick was great at. I think Michael Hayes said it best. 
He watched better than what I just said. Like, well, he had a great analogy of it in the fact that uh, he <laughs> said everyone was there to see uh, Jerry Lawler beat Nick Bogwinkle. But by the end of you guys had almost well, like a 60 minute almost. It was a really long match. Yeah. And he goes, by the end of that, people were rooting for you just to just for Nick Bockwinkle not to beat you. Yeah. And it was, it was so hard for uh, uh, and Michael Hayes really puts that thing over like uh, he learned a lot of psychology from that. I remember one time I saw uh, Lawler and Bockwinkle when we were working there and it was a uh, they went an hour. It was a draw for the AWA title. And the last five minutes of that match, the whole scenario switched because Bachwinkle busted Lawler wide open. Wow. But yeah. Bachwinkle could not beat Lawler. So the whole thing, when it started out, is Lawler had to beat Bachwinkle for the title. At the end of the match, you knew that Bachwinkle could not beat Lawler. One of the smartest things I've ever seen. Bachwinkle's title reign of 1,716 days is still one of the longest title reigns in the history of wrestling.